Keith here from North 40 Fly Shop in Omac, Washington. Uh, what we're going to tie today is a uh, leech pattern that a customer brought to our attention uh, this spring when he was fishing Omac Lake. I tweaked it a little bit and then gave it a try and it worked really good. I uh, found that it works good in not just Omac Lake, but it's uh, also worked in some of our other area lakes, including uh, the Mehau River. Um, it's a real flashy uh, balanced leech and for the fall fishery, those fish become very aggressive, and as such, I think this pattern will do really good with them. So, we'll get started in just a second. So this is what we're going to be tying up right here. Uh, this is uh, a slight variation to what the original pattern was. I added the red bead and a uh, opal underbody. So, let's get this started. We're going to get our jig hook. It's a Umqua U555 series size 12 and we'll get that in there and then we are going to uh, there we go get our thread started we're going to use olive Ultra Thread 70. And for <clears throat> the pin that we're going to use to balance this out, it's a, about a half inch. Um, come on, get out of there. Half inch sequence pin. And on top of that, I'm going to use a 1 8 tungsten bead in red and I put the, uh, the pin on the concave side that will be sticking outwards. Okay, so to kind of balance this out, what we're going to do is you do about two bead links before you get to the last bead. So we're going to extend that out about to there. And that will give us our balance that we need. Well, at least it should. And we'll get that lashed down real good. Don't mind my hand, I do that. And we're going to take our thread back to about the, right above the um, barb on the hook. And you, and as a general rule, I add a little cement to the thread wraps there that holds the oops go back the other way there we go all right so for the tail <clears throat> we're going to use some olive cross cut rabbit going to need just about a half inch is all we're going to need or half inch section off of the uh, strip don't need a lot so we're going to tie that in and we want to put the butt section of the rabbit right up against the back part of where our pin ends there. That'll build a nice kind of a transition. Wrap that foot back. That's all we need for the tail. We'll wet that up a little bit. Okay, we're going to put flash on both sides of the tail. And I'm using the lateral scale and the opal. It's the medium size or smaller scale width. The nice thing about opal, as you'll see that I'm going to use it for the body too, is it picks up the colors near it. So if it's olive, it'll give it kind of give it an olive look to it. One side, and then we're gonna bring it around. Do the other side just like that and we're going to extend that right to the end of the tail all right so we're going to form a dubbing loop and do that about about three inches or so wrap that back 
and we're going to set that out of our way for right now. Then we're going to take the uh, Mirage Tinsel, it's in the spool right there, and this is Opal also, medium size. Um, you can use the lateral scale too, so you don't have to buy two different materials. So that'll be in the description list. There you go. Get that in there. Taper that up a little bit. Fill it in. And then we're going to wrap that all the way right up to behind the, the bead. <clears throat> so we're just going to take touching wraps. It doesn't have to be exact. This is just an underbody just to add a little under flash to it all. Like I said, this is a real flashy. As for leeches, it goes, it's a real flashy one. wraps behind it, a couple in front and over, and that's all we need for that. Okay, Doo -doo -doo. so next we're going to do is we're going to take our dubbing loop and we're going to take our dubbing material which is Senyo's Fusion Dubbing in the Emerald Color. And that is the reason for the name of the fly. And even though I have a tendency to put a lot, because I'm going to take, probably take a lot back out, kind of pull it apart, load up the dubbing loop, and I want this really sparse. So I'll probably end up taking some of it back out. Such. That's about right there. Spin that up. There we go. And we're going to brush this out. Remember, this is 70 denier thread, so you don't want to get too rough with it. You'll break it. But you want to give it a good brushing, and you want to make the, the core a little bit thin of your uh, dubbing loop. So we're going to take a lot of that out. There we go. So once you get the material to start at the back, I usually take one full wrap. And then from there, I'm just gonna spiral it forward with open gaps, probably about an eight sixteenth of an inch. Like I said, I want this I want it sparse. And once I get closer to the bead, then I'll just tighten it all up on each of my wraps. Add a little bit more to it. Like such. Tie that off. A couple wraps behind, a couple in front. So, alright, so then what I'm going to do is I'm going to take a little bit more, and what I do is, is I kind of put it half on, half off over the front, one wrap, tie my thread in, I'll pull the excess down underneath, a couple of wraps, and then a little bit of super glue on the thread. Pull that back. Yep. About three turns of whip finish. Like so. 
Turn that off, and then we'll just kind of give this thing a good brushing. You'll notice that I've got longer fibers here, so I'll turn those down a little bit. Like I said, you want this kind of as a sparse fly. But that's pretty much it. Um, you can run this under an indicator. It'll balance out. Um, you can cast and retrieve. Um, when you're fishing Omac Lake, for one thing, uh, there's times when running an indicator um, is not as effective as just casting this out with a um, seven, seven and a half to five foot leader and then just kind of stripping it back as close to the bottom as you can get it, put as much movement in it as you can, or like I said, you can run an indicator and, and um, suspend this under it. Uh, simple fly, flashy as can be, um, really good in the springtime at Omac Lake, uh, it's good part of the time in springtime for the other lakes, good in the summertime on the Methow, and this is gonna be, um, I've fished other patterns like this in the fall, Flashy, fish are aggressive, they're taking stuff. This will fish really good. Thank you.